Okay, here we are with um, video two of Unit M's review on DC circuits. Okay, in the last video, we were trying to find out how much charge passes by in the first two seconds for this, um, if this, uh, the current obeys this function. So as time goes on, the current gets greater and greater and greater. And we want to know how much charge goes by a cross-sectional area of the wire. And so here we are, and um, we've um, took the, we said that I equals dQ dt, and now here we are taking the integral. So the integral is going to be um, t cubed, and then this will be 5 thirds amps over second squared. And we'll go from 0 to 2 seconds. From 2 seconds, we'll go from 2 seconds to 0 seconds. When you put in zero, you don't get anything out of this, but when you put in the two, you're going to get eight. Eight times four, five is 40 thirds. So we'll get 40 thirds amps um, times seconds. And an amp times a second, let's see, that would be 40 thirds coulombs per second times seconds. So that gives me um, just coulombs, 40 thirds coulombs. All right, next one. Move in right along. Here we have a battery. Um, it's got some internal resistance. It's got an EMF of one and a half volts. That says 1.5 volts. And um, this is a two ohm resistor. Switch is open. Here's an ammeter. Hey, when the switch is open, what will be the terminal voltage? Here's the terminals of the battery. If I put a voltmeter here, what is that voltmeter going to read? And what will be the voltage across the switch? Okay, go ahead and pause and see if you can figure that out. Okay, the voltage across the switch, well, excuse me, the terminal voltage, um, since there's no current in this circuit, there's no voltage drop across this resistor. So if I start here and I move over to here, when I go across the resistor, I times R is zero, because I is zero. And then um, you add one and a half volts. So this is one and a half volts. And um, the voltage across the switch, you Kirchhoff's loop rule says you gotta drop all your voltage when you go around any loop, any loop. And so you have to drop it across here. If you put a voltmeter there, sure enough, it will read one and a half volts. Okay, now you close the switch. So let's close the switch. And um, go ahead now and try and figure out what the, um, if the current is one and a half amps, there'll be one and a half amps through here. Oh, excuse me, a half of an amp. A half of an amp through there. Go ahead and figure out what the terminal voltage is and what the R internal must be if you get a half of an amp in here. Okay, um, hopefully you paused. Okay, if there's a half of an amp, that means there's a one volt across here. Well, that means that um, you have to have, well, I'm a little ahead of myself. That means that um, if there's one volt across there, I go up one and a half, I drop one, so I have to drop the other half here. And so this is gonna be one volt. The terminal voltage will be one volt. See, when I go here, I drop a half a volt, and then I go up one and a half. So that it makes it one volt. <clears throat> or how about if I went this way? Then I'd be going uphill, the current's going this way, so I go uphill, so I gain a volt, and so there we are, that's why it's a volt. Our internal will be the current, or the voltage drop across here, which I'm thinking is must be a half of a volt, divided by um, the current, which is a half of an amp. So it looks like our internal is um, one ohm. Okay, next thing, here we have a triple battery circuit, and uh, this is 10 volts, this is, um, this is 3 amps coming down this way, um, and then 2 amps go this way, this is 2 ohms, 1 ohm, and these are our unknowns, E1 and E2 are the two, e, the two unknowns. Um, I wrote them in this order, but why don't you try solving for, um, say, um, E2 
once you solve for E2, then E1, then voltage at A with respect to B right now. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so let's get E2 first. I'm just going to take this, this loop around here. And so it looks like if I go up, I'll start here. If I go up 10 volts, then um, I come down um, E1 because I'm going the opposite way through the battery. So I... I'm moving this way. I actually lose that E, excuse me, E2. And then when I go across here, since this is 3 amps, there's 3 amps through this whole thing. So since that's 3 amps, that's going to be minus 3 volts because I'm going with the current. That equals 0. So I'm thinking that E2 has to equal 7 volts. Okay, E1... Let's see, we'll do the same thing, I suppose. We'll go 10, 10 volts. And then uh, now going down this branch, since this is 3 amps and then 2 amps, I know that there's got to be 1 amp going to the right. It's 1 amp going to the right. And so um, it's going to do minus E1. I don't care about the which way the current's flowing when I do the battery. The battery is just, you know, e, it's just going to be, if I'm going with it, it's, I'm sorry, that's a plus E1 because I'm going with it. And then it's going to be a minus um, a certain amount of volts. How many? One, two volts. And then minus three volts. I times R equals zero. Okay, so I, I'm in trouble here. I think this battery had to pat, pat, actually be pushing the other way. Sorry about that. But uh, this is going to, so E1 is going to be a negative. This is actually turned the other way. Because, um, let's see, this is going to be, this would have to be 5 volts. E1 would have to be negative 5 volts. So it must be pu pushing the other way. So let's adjust that, my mistake. So it's actually pushing that way. Okay. And then lastly, they want to know the voltage at A with respect to B. The voltage at A with respect to B. So I'm going to start at B and I'm going to work my way over to A. Now I can do that one of three ways. I can go this way, I can go this way, or I can go this way. Uh, this way is the easiest because I only have one element in there. So I'm going to just go this way. And it, apparently I go up. And what did I say E2 was? 7 volts. So the voltage at A... With respect to B is a positive 7 volts. A is 7 volts higher. That's why the current flows. Current flows from high to low voltage. Except in batteries where it actually goes uphill. But in regular circuits, current will flow from the high to the low voltage. All right. Uh, let's see if we can get this one done. Then we'll have one more video, I suppose. Okay, we got 16 volt battery, a 2 ohm resistor, a 6 ohm resistor, and a 2 farad capacitor. Um, when the switch is connected, can you tell me how much um, charge will be on this capacitor? Can you tell me how much charge will be on that capacitor? Okay, now um, current doesn't flow. T pause and try that out. Okay, okay current doesn't flow through here. Uh, it just stops. It just charges it up. And so the current is going to flow just this way. None will go down here once this is charged up. In like a nanosecond, it's going to get charged. So um, this gets the same current as this. So that's 8 ohms of resistance. So I'm thinking there's 2 amps here. There'll still be 2 amps here. That's 12 volts. If that's 12 volts across here because of I times R, then this has to be 12 because of the loop rule. So if there's 12 volts, Q is CV. So C is 2 farads times 12 volts, that's 24 coulombs, 24 coulombs, so that's how you do that. Uh, I have time for one other one, can you tell me how much um, thermal energy will be created in the 2 ohm, in the 2 ohm in um, say 10 seconds, how much thermal energy will be created in this 2 ohm in 30 seconds, okay I got a fly here, the power across there that's being used by that is I squared R. So it's 2 squared, that's 4, times 2 is uh, going to be 8. It's 8 watts. And so that's 
eight uh, it's 80 joules.